We had a young man who does a, such a great job. He did a Saturday. He did our every second Saturday of every month. He's going to be doing a training. And I mean, he does a fantastic training, hands down. Uh, and without further ado, I'm going to have him come up today and just share with everybody. I'm going to give you the great regional director from San Diego, California. You guessed it. Mr. Julian Lewis. Can we give him a hand? Sir, good morning, everyone. Hope everyone is doing incredible. Happy Friday. Before I get started, I just want to give it back uh, to my mentor, Mr. Al Thomas, and I want to let you know whether you're working with him uh, personally, whether he's he's a part of your upline, or whether uh, whether you found this call and now you're working with him because you love uh, what we're doing. Uh, he is a tremendous leader. He helps everyone. He he doesn't he doesn't he doesn't even like to take the uh, credit. In most cases, I mean, some of the conversations we've had, um, I'm taking notes when it seems like it's a regular conversation. It's because he has so much wisdom and he's willing to pour into those that really want it. So I appreciate you, Mr. Thomas. And, and I, I look forward to seeing you here real soon, uh, maybe going up the coast, if you know what I'm talking about. Wink, wink. So. Ladies and gentlemen, um, I, I'm going to get right into this, but just to give you a brief background, I know we have a lot of people on here. Uh, prior to getting involved with this company, I was a senior systems engineer. I was working roughly 80 to 90 hours a week at my job. I was averaging 50 to 60 flights a year, which put me in a situation where I really didn't have a lot of time for myself or my family. But good fortune came my way. I was introduced to this company by my first mentor in this industry who shared with me a system that allowed me to replace my income, come home to my family and become the type of father that I felt my daughter deserved. And this was important to me because my father um, worked, eight, my, my father worked a lot in the military. He was always traveling. And one of the things that he said he regretted is not having enough time for his two sons. And I didn't want to have to say that uh, and repeat that to my daughter. So ACN allowed that to be possible for me. And what we're gonna be talking about this morning, I'm actually really excited about because it's something that uh, I know with ACN getting back into it, it's something that some most of the people that are new over the last two years really haven't really, uh, really haven't been a part of. And because you haven't been a part of it, because we, we don't, hadn't really talked about it much, you may not understand the power in it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring up a few slides real quick. And as you take a look at these slides, what I'm gonna be talking about are the training events, okay? And the reason why I'm gonna be talking about the training events, guys, is because when it comes to building ACN, when it comes to being successful, the biggest part, the biggest part of being successful in this business are the training events. And I know you may have heard it from other people, but the, the, the training events can do more for your business that you, than you can ever do for yourself. You cannot be a prophet in your own town. I learned, that, I learned that a long time ago. I learned that a long time ago from my personal mentor. He said, Julian, the things that you attempt to try to share with your team, someone else can say the exact same thing, but if it's coming from that other person, they're gonna hear it differently because they filter the information through the person that or the messenger that is giving it to them. Okay, so you wanna get great at promoting the events. And we have, we have an incredible event every single, uh, every single day, Monday through Friday, right here on this particular line. So you can come in and you can learn from people. But what I wanna talk about right now is we are in the promoting business. That's what we're in. And it's not even promoting the 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 it's not promoting the event it's promoting the individual so the first event is your launch you know what we call that uh, in our team is a soft opening and what we're doing in that event is we're getting the closest people that is to a brand new person to see the information why do we why do we focus on the closest people to an individual because think about the people that are closest to you in your world you already know their schedule you already know what time they take a lunch break. You already know when they're gonna be off. And there's no script that you're gonna to need to share with them in order to tell them you're excited and to, and to show them something. So they're able to get to those individuals quickly 
And because they're the closest people, those people usually have a lot more respect for them. And so they're excited to hear the information. The purpose of that is to get a recruit for a recruit. So what we do is we don't promote a soft opening or a launch. We promote them uh, intro being introduced by this special person that they're working with. And so that means that instead of saying, I'm really just excited about a business, you say, listen, I'm really excited about something. I need your opinion. There's an expert that's working with me closely and I, I, and I want to introduce you to because I'm so excited. And that's a three-way call to set up a, the, that first meeting for those people. And then we have our private business Zoom. And the private business Zoom is the grand opening. And the grand opening, who do you invite to a grand opening? Everyone. I want you to think about grand openings that you've heard of. Everyone is invited. And in the grand opening, we are showcasing or we're doing a business reveal of what you're doing today. And so if you notice, I said business reveal because you always want to freshen up the, 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 the conversation that you're using versus using outdated language. I learned that from uh, Larry Raskin. And then you have the training. The training is where we break down the blueprint. And I want to talk about that because every second Saturday of the month isn't a leadership training. Listen to me carefully. Every second Saturday of the month isn't a leadership training. It's a training where we break down the blueprint of ACM, where we go step by step into how to have results in the ACM, where we talk about the mindset that you want to have, how to acquire customers, how to build a team. We also talk about the events and how important the events are to building your business. And that will catapult you to another level. In a conversation I had with Mr. Tony Cooper, co-founder of the company, he said the whole purpose of the, of the end of the week training or a monthly training is to group launch everyone by people that are effectively launching in the market. So on, on every second Saturday, you're not going to have just anyone giving the information. You're only going to have people that are actively, effectively promoting people to executive team leader, doing PBZs, getting people paid, and generating results so that you can learn from the best in, in, in the organization and you can get those results as well. But the most important training events that we have and that you want to focus on are the co-founder trainings and this one that I'm going to bring up. So anyone that promotes to executive team leader Ladies and gentlemen, you're going to get a, a special email from the, uh, from the co-founders of the company acknowledging that you promoted to that position, but also inviting you to an, attend the special executive team leader leadership. I highly recommend it, guys. One of the largest, uh, fastest growing teams in my organization came from a, a young lady named Melanie, and she had only been in the business uh, for five or six days. And I knew that the executive team leadership, uh, executive team leader leadership was coming up that Saturday. And I called her and I said, hey, listen, this event that's taking place on Saturday, it's not just any event. And I want you to hear because I'm talking about how to promote, okay? It's not just any event. This event is gonna be hosted by the co-founders of the company, Mr. Greg Provenzano and Mr. Tony Kupis. And I said, what you need to understand about these co-founders is they're not like every, they're not like traditional co-founders. They don't just own a company. The respect that I have for them is because they've been co-founders since day one. How many companies have you ever heard of where the co-founders are still co-founders 20 to 30 years later? It doesn't happen. And then the other thing is they built this business the same way you and I build the business in the trenches, sharing the information, presenting to people, enrolling and acquiring customers. In fact, they're the reason why the, a company is so big across all the countries we're in because they, they laid the foundation as independent business owners. So do you think they could give you some valuable information on how to take this business to the next level? Absolutely, and it's invite only. And so here's what I told her. You are so close to executive team leader. If we can get it done, you can be in attendance in that training with those men who helped me to get to the level that I'm at. When I tell you she was excited, 
that's an understatement. By the next day, listen to me carefully, by the next refresh, which was, I talked to her in the evening, by the refresh the next day, she was an executive team leader. So my, me promoting the event that she could get to helped her to see the value in stretching herself and moving faster than she normally would. It wasn't like she had all the time in the world. She was working 50 to 60 hours as an IT professional in Northern California. She was in the process of moving her, her, herself and her family from, where, from their apartment to a new home. And all of us who've moved before, you know how stressful that is. So she, would, she had a, a lot of moving parts, but even though she did, she saw the value of being in that, in that virtual space with the co-founders that I promoted. And because of that, she got, she got there. And her vision was expanded because she was able to see more than I could give her. She was able to see all the people promoting to executive team leader, all the, the vision of the company and where they started. And because of that, it, she built one of the fastest growing teams in Marie's organization. And she's looking to close off regional coordinator in the next few weeks, guys. And it's because of that event that took her to the next level. Although it was virtual, it expanded her vision and it allowed her to see what was necessary and how real ACN is. And she's really le legitimately looking for ACN to replace her income as an IT professional. So that's what an executive team leader event did for her. So if you're not focused on making sure your team members are seeing something bigger, you're missing the big point that it's not about me. It's not about us. It's about getting our people in front of people that are better than us, in front of events that are bigger than us. And the event that is a lot bigger than all of us on this call right now is the North America training event, the Elevate event coming up in Oklahoma City, March 18th through 19th. And if you guys want, you can, you can hit that, uh, you, can, you, you can register right away. I would recommend it. And here's why. I would not be here in ACN if it wasn't for my first international training event. I wouldn't be here. I would not exist. And I think about, and I think about that, how scary that is. Because of all the leaders that I've been able to see come through my organization. Uh, my, my first, what we call team coordinator, which would be called a regional director today, was working uh, over 100 hours a week as a family practitioner, a, a doctor who would cry every single day to her best friend because she didn't have time to spend with her son who was three years old. I, I would not have met people that were the people that were looking for an opportunity had I not decided to go to this event. And I, I know I wouldn't have the belief. I decided to go kicking and screaming. And, and the reason why I didn't want to go is because I didn't have a mindset that was that of, of how to build this business and to be successful. I told my mentor, get this, when he told me to go to my first international event, I told him here, I don't really have time to do all of this extracurricular stuff. <laughs> That's great that you guys come together, sing Kumbaya and, and, and songs and stuff. I don't have time for that. Why don't you take notes while you're there since you're so excited about going? And when you come back, I'll just review your notes. Why did I think that was possible? Because I went to school, got good grades, went to college, and I went through an education system that taught me looking at someone's notes was actually learning. The truth is it isn't. It isn't. Memorization and regurgitation isn't learning. You don't learn anything from that. What you learn from are the experiences. See, it wasn't about the notes that would have been on that pad that my mentor would have taken notes from. I would have missed out on the body of the notes because I would not have had the experience associated with the notes. The notes were just taking and jotting down parts of the experience to come back from, to come back to, to impact him over and over again. And I wouldn't have had it. And I'm so glad my mentor asked me to meet him. He asked me to meet him in, uh, at a Starbucks 
in San Diego in Mission Valley uh, next to the Ikea, the only one in San Diego. So I pulled up at the time, at the time, this was years ago, I pulled up in a V6 Honda Accord. He pulled up in a bright yellow Lamborghini, okay? I was waiting for him. He, he used to always run late back then. And I was waiting for him in the car. He pulls up on the right side of me. I get out of the car. He gets out of his car and we're talking. We're talking in the front of our cars. And he's telling me, look, man, you gotta go to the, you gotta go to the event. I said, I don't wanna go. And he said, Julian, you don't understand. If you don't go to this event, you won't have success. And I said, wow, that's a huge statement. That's pretty bold to say. Um, I don't know why you're trying to convince me so much. Now, what I, what, what I, what I didn't tell you guys is uh, my mentor, he was really good at convincing, okay? So he, he said, Julian, if you don't go, I really can't afford to work with you because I will be wasting time working with you because you won't have all the things you need as a prerequisite to have success in this business. And I thought he was threatening me and saying, I just won't work with you. And I said, you know what? Fine, I'll go to this event. And he pulled out, he, he pulled out of the trunk of the Lamborghini, which is in the front of the car. He pulled out of his briefcase, uh, a yellow sheet that I had to sign in to get registered. And when he pulled out the sheet, he pulled out a Mont Blanc out of his front pocket and he started to uh, have me fill it out. He laid it on the hood of the Lamborghini and he said, fill it out. And I said, I'm not, I'm not riding on the hood of the car. He said, the value of you getting this filled out is worth more than this Lamborghini paint job. Fill it out. And I filled it out. I got registered, but I was upset, guys. I was so upset. So I called ACN because I said, this guy must get paid extra bonuses or something for convincing people to go to this event. That's how, that's how negative corporate America had made me. And so I called up ACN and I asked corporate and they said, he doesn't get paid a dime. And guys, I felt like a complete idiot because I said I would be coachable but I was at that point only, be, only being coachable to the things I was comfortable with. And I want you to be honest with yourself because all of us say that we're gonna be coachable. To this point, have you been 100% coachable like Mr. Dean Tarali was talking about, like uh, Miss um, uh, Perry was talking about, or have you been coachable to your level of, comf of comfort? And so, I decided I was gonna go, it was last minute, and Ashlyn, Mr. Bill Bailey, you guys know, he was living in Texas at the time, and uh, we drove out there. I was so uncomfortable, I rode with people. Um, this was before Detroit, Ashlyn, I rode with people to, um, to, to stay out there, and, and we wound up staying in his mansion in Texas, okay? And then we went to the event, and when we went to the event, I heard a lady speak about a subject that became huge for me. And being that this is African-American History Month, Black History Month, I'm gonna share this story with all of you. See, she told a story. I, I, the reason why I listened to her is because at the time, she was what we call an Asian influencer today. She was an Asian influencer and so was her husband, both at the top levels in the company. And I was blown away because they were separate. And all I could see was the glitz. Ashlyn, I know you remember, all I could see was the diamond shining on her, on her finger from way back in the audience. And I started to listen. And she started to tell a story about Harriet Tubman. And I wanna to talk to all of you about that right now. Because Harriet Tubman, how many of you, and I wanna, I'm gonna look at the gallery right now, how many of you know by a show of hands who Harriet Tubman is? If you don't, it's okay. But if you do, I need to see your hands. I'm looking at the gallery right now. So how many of you know? Okay, great. I'm seeing your hands. I'm, I'm flipping pages, y'all. We have a lot of people on here. All right, so great. For those of you that do not know, 
Harriet Tubman helped to free slaves uh, through the Underground Railroad. And I mean, it freaks me out to this day to, 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 to realize that my ancestors were slaves in this country. And I, I wanna ask you all uh, an honest question and you can put it in the chat. How many of you, if you were a slave and Harriet Tubman came in to offer you your freedom, how many of you would go? And I want you to put in the chat if you would go. If you would go, just say yes. I wanna see in the chat who would go if Harriet Tubman came up to you to offer your freedom. Yes, I see you. Yes, yes, yes. Daryl, you would, Catherine, Belinda. Man, it's going fast. Ariel, absolutely. Jada, Cornell, absolutely. Rick, of course. Fetty, yes, yes, yes. Right, when it was asked to me, I said yes too. Like, of course, of course I would go. But I want you to really think about this because this is important. See, how could you know what freedom was if no one around you had it? See, hindsight is 2020 vision. We're thinking about freedom being offered to us from a perspective of free men and women on this call. But if your great grandfather was a slave, your grandfather was a slave, your father was a slave, everyone that looked like you, walked like you, talked like you, or thought like you were slaves, how could you conceive being free if no one around you was? Different, right? And even though it was that different, Harriet Tubman would still go into each plantation and she would go and ask people to take them to freedom. And I want you to think about this. She would go and offer it and she would say, Lillian, you don't have to be a slave. We're taking people to freedom. It'll take you six to eight months to get there. But when you get there, you'll be able to own your own land. You'll be able to marry whoever you want to. More importantly, you'll be able to free your children. You know what most people said? You're crazy. I'm not going with you anywhere. Do you know what happens to slaves if they're caught running? I may not be free, but at least I'm alive. I'm going to stay put. Most people thought that way. And she would say, she would go up to other people and she would say, Camille, you don't have to live this way. We're taking people to freedom and it'll take you six to eight months to get there. But when you get there, you'll be able to own your own land, marry whoever you want to. More importantly, your children will live free. And then Camille would get excited like a lot of us would. She would get excited and then she would do what we probably would do. She would go back into the plantation and try to round up the people that she cared about. But then guess what would happen? Her friends, her family, the people she cared about would say, you're crazy. Don't you know what happens to slaves that are caught running? We're not going anywhere and you need to stay put. Out of love, the people she loved would snatch her dream of being free right out from under her and she would stay put. And then Harriet Tubman, she would go out to other people and say, Rick, you don't have to live this way. We're taking people to freedom. It'll take you six to eight months to get there. When you get there, you're on your own land, marry whoever you want. More importantly, your ch children will know what it means to be free. But then Rick, he would go back into plant plantation and he would meet the same adversity that Camille would meet. His friends, his family, his loved ones would say, you're crazy. You need to stay put because we're staying put. The difference is, he would say, well, then you stay, I'll go. Because I'd rather die for my freedom than live in captivity as a slave. And God forbid I have the same results for my children. Six to eight months later, he'd find himself in Canada, being able to marry freely, being able to live the way he wants, being able to own land, more importantly, knowing his future, his children would live free. What did he have to give up? He had to change his thinking. See, they interviewed Harriet Tubman in Canada and said, you must feel great about yourself. You freed hundreds of slaves. You know what she said? She said, I would have freed thousands if they knew they were slaves. Guys, that hit me in my chest. I could feel my heart different. I get goosebumps even repeating it to this day. And you know what's funny? They actually think, people actually think that they got rid of slavery in this country. They actually think, and people are so scared of freedom. 
Why? Because they didn't get rid of slavery. They replaced it with the W-2 because you cannot tax a slave. And when you and I go up to people and try to offer them their freedom, they say, are you crazy? I had a family member that did one of those things. Those things don't work. And when you go up to the next person that you try to offer freedom to, they get excited. They want to do ACN, but then they go back to their family that they love and care about, and their family knocks them out of the box before they even have success. But then there are certain people, there are some people that could care less about what others think. There are some people that decide to be pioneers of their family. There are some people that want to blaze a trail and create freedom and financial freedom for the rest of the people in their generations to come. And what I'm telling you is, I would have never gotten that perspective had I could had I convinced my mentor that I didn't need to go to an event. And I wouldn't be the man that I am today, and I wouldn't be the, the, the father that pours in to my 16-year-old who was six months old when I was able to start personal development the way I do today, had it not been for the event. And I know we're in a different time right now. And I know it's strange. And I know that we're, we're talking about and we're, we're the pandemic. And I know all of these things. And you might be afraid of certain things that are happening in the country. You may not understand or you may not want to be sick. Fear is, fear is so addictive. But freedom tastes better. And so what I'm asking you to do is to have courage. Get registered now when you feel it in your spirit. Get registered and then get somebody else registered and commit to going to the event so that you could have the mindset shift necessary to take your kids and your family for generations to come to freedom. Mr. Thomas, I know I, I just, I jumped on as, as, as a favor last minute as a backup, but I, I wanted to make sure that each and every single person on the call had what was necessary. I hope um, all of you got what I was saying, and I'm looking forward to seeing all of you in Oklahoma City, March 18th 19th, through the 19th. Mr. Thomas, I'll turn the call back over to you, sir.